Hi everyone, welcome back and in this video I'll be giving you some information on the status quo bias. So this is one of another concept that is in behavioral science and I've taken a couple of videos on some other toolkits that's in behavioral science. So if you want to take a look at them, you can click on the links that I've provided in the description box. So without any further delay, let's get into it. So what is the status quo bias? So it's just very simple. The status quo bias is one type of cognitive bias that involves people preferring that things stay as they are, okay, based on past experiences or knowledge. So it's just that they choose something that they are already aware of. They don't want to change anything. They prefer that everything is just the same. And that's what is called the status quo bias. And this bias tremendously or to a considerable amount um, and to an extent influences decisions and behaviors that humans make. So this was initially introduced by William Samuelson and Richard Zekhauser in 1988. So what's about this status quo bias? So the status quo bias minimizes the risks associated with change. So whenever there is a change, there is some risk some uncertainty which is a risk but it's also it causes people to miss out on potential benefits that might even outweigh these risks so let's say for example you want to choose a new um, health insurance plan and you want to choose maybe a plan or possible uh, a provider of this insurance so if you already have an existing health insurance, probably if you have a lot of this status quo bias, you would feel that you would never want to switch to another plan or another provider because you feel that everything works well as of now and I don't need anything. Or even if you want to consider, sometimes you might fear the risks of things that can happen if you switch to another health provider, insurance provider. But that's on the first side where it minimizes risks associated with change but it also causes people to miss out on potential benefits so if at all the other plan or the provider was offering something better than an existing um, health insurance provider you're kind of missing out on those potential benefits so that's what happens when there is status quo bias and we can see the status quo bias practically every day and we make certain decisions every day which is kind of status quo biases that we can see. So for example, have you seen these people? They kind of go to the restaurant, they sit down and they kind of, you know, go through the entire menu card end to end, but in the end, you know just what they're going to order and that's what they order. Because they have this strong status quo bias that they have had something earlier, it's good, and they have this pro um, fuzzy um, thinking where they feel that, probably the dish that they want to order is just not as good as the dish they already had. So they go with the existing one. And another example is people continue the same medication. So you kind of can see this uh, bias very strong in elderly um, people where they feel that they have been, you know, accustomed to a traditional medication for a long time. And even if there was any potential better medications out there, they would feel that they don't need it. And another example is you're walking into a store and you want to purchase a shampoo. Though there might be some better shampoos out there, still you go and pick up the one that you're familiar with and what maybe you have already used. So these are just few examples of status quo biases and I think by now you might figure out like what are the biases that you are kind of um, prone to. So um, there are certain other biases that support the status quo bias, which is the first one is loss aversion bias. So this bias is basically the potential for loss stands out in people's mind much more prominently than the potential for gains. So take for example the stock market. There are two sets of people, people with a higher risk appetite and people with a lower risk appetite. So people with a lower risk appetite to them, they kind of see the loss, potential losses very prominently. But people with a higher risk uh, risk at, uh, appetite see the gains more than the losses. So this is more of people having 
the low risk appetite can be said that they have this loss aversion bias where they fear the loss more than the gains and another bias that supports the status quo bias is exposure so exposure is nothing but mere exposure or the tendency to prefer things as they are simply because they are familiar so this is very common when you want to choose a product or a brand or anything else but i have personally felt that this is very um you know prominent if i want to buy a product though there are so many other products out there first i reach out to my connections or peers asking like what do you think about this and i have heard about it do you think it's good and they say like yeah i have also have heard about it maybe it, and it, it works good so just because i have heard it or i've seen it in advertisements and i'm just familiar with it i tend to choose that particular um you know option so this is very common so you have this bias especially when it, it comes with words faces drawings products brands a lot of things are associated and examples of this type of exposure bias and while it might seem that expo this status quo bias is kind of good because based on your past experiences you're kind of making decisions yes in one way it is good but on the flip side there are also other negative um, aspects to the status quo bias the first one is it affects the ability to take decisions so let's say that you have like five options before you let's say go back to the shampoo example and you have heard of one shampoo you have used one shampoo and then there are three unknown shampoos so you just go and pick out the one that you're familiar with or you have already used so you don't even sometimes we don't tend to look at the other options and some potential options could be actually beneficial so we just lose out on it and we don't even make any decision at that point it's just like you know you go in you pick up one and you just come out The second one is it is a blocker to make changes and try something new in order to achieve something valuable. So you don't even want to take up that change. You don't want to entertain change in your life. Um, you just feel that things are going well and I, the things that I've used is perfect, and I just don't want change. So it just limits you from achieving something more valuable sometimes. and it also causes a low risk appetite so people generally they don't want to take a risk as i said in the stock market example they don't want to take a risk and it, depending on how much of this bias they have it really creates a very low risk appetite for people and another one is low motivation to adopt new processes so um especially you can see whenever there's some change when, for example in an organization some process changes people generally don't want to change, you know change that they don't want to get into that change they don't even want that change because things are fine the way they are and why change so these are some effects of the status quo bias and specifically even when you see in when you're dealing with products and in an organization some things that happen around us is imagine you want to choose a software product for your organization or even for yourself there's a status quo bias where people kind of choose the product that's most well known or people are using that the most and the second one is transitioning to another role or department so whenever there's some transition happening you're just familiar with what you know you don't want to um transition into some unknown role you don't want to you know um change any process things like that and even designing features and solutions you just get limited based on your experiences and you feel that something is really working well as it is and you just don't want to enhance things or you just don't want to modify or um tweak anything that's another example and another one could be choosing an existing plan or subscription so for your organization so um let's say you have a plan to choose and you you feel that the existing plan is well and good enough and you just don't want to switch the plan even though certain other plans could be um cost efficient for your organization so all this are results of the status quo bias that influence the behavior and decisions that people take so i hope that you got some understanding on what's the status quo bias and if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe to this channel and also do share your feedbacks thank you